How to Sew the Notebook Cover with Amber Makes. It's available in a choice of prints to keep all of your little notes to hand. Cover your little A6 notebook cover in style. Follow me and I'll show you how. Cutting out. Take the fabric panel from your kit, open it out and give it a press. Now if you have a look at it, you can see all the fabric pieces you need to cover your notebook are on here with a label above each one. Cut round the outer edge of each piece, the seam allowances are included, and pin the label to the top of each piece. And it will look like this. You've got the book cover front and the book cover back. You've got two book cover flaps, the book cover outer, the slip pocket outer and lining, and the pencil pocket outer and lining. And you've also got a lining piece for the cover, a choice of labels to put onto your cover, and also an A6 notebook to fit inside. Adding the label. You can add a printed label to the front of your notebook. Choose the one you want. Now I've placed Bonderweb on the back of mine. I've pressed it with the paper side up just because it makes it easier to hold it into place. You don't have to use this, but it just makes it a little bit easier. So just cut around the outer edge of your chosen label. If you doesn't matter whether you're using Bonderweb or not, cut around the outer edge. Now take your book cover front, place it right sides up and the label needs to go in this space. Remove the paper backing. If you would rather personalise your notebook with your name or another message, you could write on that using a permanent pen instead of sewing the label into place in the space on the book cover front. But if you're using a label, place it onto the right on top of that, it fits exactly, and then press it into place if you're using Bonderweb. If not, then just pin it into place. Now stitch it to hold. I've used a blanket stitch on my machine, but you could use just a top stitch or a zigzag stitch, it's up to you. And there's your book cover front neatly labelled. Making the slip pocket. Take the slip pocket outer and the slip pocket lining, place them right sides facing, making sure that the top edges of each match up and then pin together along the top edge. Now sew these two pieces together just along the top edge. Once it's done, it will look like this. Open out the two pieces and press that seam open and flat. That helps to keep the seam right on the top edge. Now refold them so that they are wrong sides facing and make sure that seam is lying right on the edge by rolling it between your fingers. Pressing it open and flat earlier will have helped with this and then give it a press. Then top stitch along this top edge. This neatens it and also holds the lining inside. And then your little slip pocket will look like this. You can take the label off the back now, you won't need that. Now take the book cover back and place the slip pocket right sides up on the right side of it, matching up the bottom and the side raw edges. The prints will match up, so adjust it slightly just to make sure that the prints match up. That's really important because you'll get a neater finish this way. So even if it doesn't match up exactly on the bottom of the sides, do make sure the prints match up. And then pin it together across the bottom and down the sides. Now tack it together inside the seam allowance, so just eighth an inch from the edge, down the sides and across the bottom. And it will look like this and your slip pocket is now attached to the book cover back. Making the pencil pocket. Take the pencil pocket outer and the pencil pocket lining. Remove the labels. Now place them right sides facing, making sure all the raw edges match up. Now you need to leave a turning gap so you can turn this right sides out. So measure and mark the center of one of the long sides. And then measure three quarters of an inch either side of this central mark and that marks a one and a half inch turning gap in the center of one long edge. Now making sure the raw edges are still matching up, pin it together all the way around. Now sew the two pieces together, starting at one side of the turning gap all the way around and finishing at the other side of the turning gap, reverse stitching at the end of the seams. Now press all the seams over to one side and where the turning gap is, press the seam over to one side on both sides because that holds it under. Now to reduce the bulk in the corners, trip off the 
clip off the corner and then snip a little bit of fabric to grade the seams either side. This just will give you nice right angle points when you turn it right sides out because it's a little pocket and with all of this bulk in the corners you'll get more rounded corners. So just take the time to snip these off but just make sure you don't cut into the stitches but just snip close to them. Once that's done, you can turn it right sides out through the turning gap. Now push out all the corners. Use something that's pointed but not too sharp. I'm using the turning stick for my turning tool, but you could use a blunt pair of scissors or a chopstick. Then push out the corners to make sure that you don't pierce the fabric or the stitching push the fabric onto the tool rather than the tool into the corner and that just it does it a little bit more slowly and more gently doing it this way and you won't break the fabric fold the edges of the turning gap back under because you pressed them under earlier that will be easy and then give it a good press and then top stitch along the cross top edge that just adds a little decoration and holds the lining neatly inside now take one of the book cover flaps and measure three quarters of an inch up from the bottom edge. Place the bottom of the pencil pocket on this mark and then make sure it's placed centrally across and that it's lying straight. You can judge this by eye or you can just measure either side to make sure it's central. Make sure it is facing up straight so it's the same distance from both sides and then pin it into place. Now stitch the pencil pocket into place, down the side, across the bottom, up the side, other side. Make sure you stitch fairly close to the edges. I've done mine just a few millimetres, like a sixteenth of an inch from the edge. And there's your pencil pocket finished. Making the book cover outer. <clears throat> Take the book cover front and the book cover back and place them right sides facing. And then pin them together along the left hand side of the book cover front. That will be the right hand side of the book cover back. Match up the raw edges and pin them together. Now sew them together all the way down this side. You'll be sandwiching the slip pocket between this seam. And then open it out and press the seam towards the book cover front. This allows the slip pocket to lay flatter. Now take the flap that's got the pencil pocket on it and place that on the right hand side of the book cover front and matching raw edges pinned together. So you're pinning them together along the right hand side of the book cover front and the left hand side of the book cover flap. Make sure this is the flap with the pencil pocket attached so that your pencil will be at the front of your book. The pencil pocket will be at the front of your book. Pin them together and then sew all the way down this seam. And then you can press this seam open or you can press it to one side. Take the other book cover flap and sew that to the left hand side of the book cover back. Match up the raw edges. And pin together. And then sew together all the way along. You can press the seam open or to one side, it's up to you. I press that one over to one side because it helps to lay the slip pocket flat and that's your book cover finished. Assembling the book cover. Take the book cover outer that you've joined together and place it right sides facing with the book cover lining. Make sure you match up all the raw edges. So start by pinning it in one corner. I'm pinning it in the top left corner here and then pin it together in the top right corner. Now you can pin it between. If you pull the fabric slightly, you may find because of the seams in the book cover outer that it pulls it in a bit. So if you just pull it slightly, it will fit nicely. Make sure the raw edges match and pin together along the top edge. Now you can pin together down the side and pin at the bottom edge. Again, match up the corners first and then pin between and just adjust it so that those raw edges are always matching up. 
and then pin it together down the other side. Now we need to leave a turning gap. The turning gap needs to be in the center of the flap, the flap that doesn't have the pencil pocket on. So this will be on the back of the book cover. So measure to find the center of this flap. Remember it's the flap without the pencil pocket on. And then measure one inch either side of that center mark. And then that will mark a two inch turning gap in the center of that flap. Now sew it together all the way around, starting at one side of the turning gap, sewing all the way around and finishing at the other side, reverse stitching either ends of those seams. Once it's done, fold the seam allowance over to one side and press. But with the turning gap, fold the seam allowances over on both sides and that keeps the turning gap under. Now to reduce the bulk in the corners, snip across the corner and then take a little piece out either side that just grades the seam and reduces the bulk in the corners. And repeat this on all four corners, but do make sure that you don't cut through the stitching. If you do, don't worry, pop it back under your machine and sew it back into place. So you just need to cut close to the stitching to remove as much bulk as you can, but without actually cutting through the stitching. Now once that's done, put your fingers inside the turning cap, grab hold of one of the bottom corners on the opposite side and push it through. Once you've got that corner, pull it and that is an easier way to turn it all right sides out. If you take a corner right on the other side and then it will pull through better than just trying to turn it right sides out. So once the whole book cover is right sides out, you just need to push out those corners. I like to push them out with my corner with my fingers first and then use a pointed tool to just push out the corners. Make sure it's not too pointed because you don't want to split the fabric or the stitching. Again, remember if you push the fabric onto the tool rather than the tool into the corner, you're less likely to go through the fabric or the stitches. So just do this slowly and carefully. Then give it a really good press so that all the seams are laying right on the edges. Roll them between your fingers and give it a good press. And also make sure the edges of the turning gap are still turned under when you do this. Now top stitch up down either short end, so either end of the flaps. And then it will look like this. And this just gives a nice neat edge to the flaps and also holds the turning gap closed. Also, sew along those seams. It helps the book cover to fold. So if you sew through the seams into the lining, it just helps it to fold round. Now to form the book cover, fold the flap over so the lining sides are facing, making sure the seam that joined the flap to the book cover front and to the book cover back is lying right on the edge. You may find it easier to press this and then clip it. Now I'm using fabric clips just because there's a lot of layers of fabrics and easier than using pins, but you can use pins. And with the other side, again, make sure that the seam that's joining the flap into place is right on the edge and pin or clip it into place. Do make sure when you're doing this that the top edges all match up exactly so it's nice and straight. Once you've folded and clipped the flaps over, sew all the way along the top edge and along the bottom edge. Now do this very close to the edge or your book cover won't fit in. If you have any difficulties getting through all these layers, you can over sew those flaps into place by hand if you prefer. Your book cover is now finished. So all you've got to do is take your little notebook, slip it inside one flap on one end and then on the other. This means that you can replace the notebook with a new one when you filled it up with all of your notes as it's very easily removable and you've got a really beautifully covered little notebook that's labelled on the front, a slip pocket in the back to put all your notes in and then all you need to do is pop a little pencil into the pencil pocket and your book cover is now finished. <laughs>